Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Open Door Church. Welcome to today's daily devotional. And uh, we have been looking at the book of Acts. Well, I've been looking at the book, uh, book of Acts and uh, looking at Acts chapter one. And so I'm going to read for the first uh, six verses and then we're looking at verse six. So let's read. In my former book, Theophilus, I write about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised you with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, verse 6, after Jesus has said, after he'd died, after he'd risen uh, and he'd spent 40 days with them and he'd said, look, you were baptized with water. I'm going to now baptize you with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to drench you, going to immerse you. The Greek word baptismo means uh, like a ship that sunk, like a die that's put in water and it comes up something different. It's transformational immersion. You're going to be baptized. You're going to be totally transformed by the power of God, says Jesus. Whoa, this is amazing. This is fantastic news. And what do they do? They gather around Jesus, very wise. And they say, well, Lord, are you going to at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? What? What has that got to do with what Jesus was saying? It's like they've completely missed the point. Why are you talking about restoring the kingdom to Israel? This this has nothing to do with Jesus' mission. He was the saviour of the world. He is now the one who's going to visit them in power. Why now are they talking about the nation state of Israel and God restoring the kingdom that was, that we find in the Old Testament, uh, uh, Judah and Israel? Why are they talking about that? Well, the reason why is in their thinking, They were thinking the wrong way about why Jesus came. Jesus just didn't come for the Jews, for God's chosen people, for for those of the nations of the lands, lands of Israel and Judah. He was coming to make a new people, those who by faith trusted in Jesus the Messiah, those who were the true seed, book of Hebrews, of Abraham, those who had faith in God, who trusted in God. So now... uh, they were still thinking the old way. You see, in the Old Testament, faith in Yahweh, the God of Israel, was very much linked to the land, to the nation of Israel, to the land, the promised land that he promised to them. And their whole inheritance was of the land. They, as tribes came in uh, and took the land into the, uh, into Joshua and Judges. They came in, tribes took the land they were meant to take. And it was always about God's promise to them as a nation and uh, as a as a as a nation full of families full of tribes and so here they're still thinking that Jesus the Messiah come and it's to do with the land it's to do with God restoring them as an ethnic group but actually Jesus came as savior of the world of every ethno linguistic group of every nation of every tribe Revelation 7 verse 9 he will save a people from every language of every tribe of every race And they will be one new nation, one holy nation, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. Together, one new humanity, one new race. Those who are born again, those who know Jesus. And yet they completely missed it. God was doing something new and they were still holding on to something old, to an old way of thinking, to an old way of understanding. We're in this period of coronavirus crisis and We're in a situation where many things that we do now are very different from how we've done them in the past. 
Uh, for instance, I can't imagine not gathering on a Sunday. We always gather on Sunday. That's what you do. You're Christian. You gather together at church every Sunday because you want to meet with God. You want to uh, hear from the scriptures. You want to be in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And you also, you want to be in the presence of your brothers and sisters together. Um, it's so odd that the way in which we can meet, thanks to Steve and the production team and the, and the wonders of all the IT stuff that I don't understand, is we can still meet together. But it's not the same as how we did it before. Well, that's what's going on here. Things are very different. Things have changed. We have to change right now the way we're thinking. Coronavirus never caught God by surprise. He knew what he was doing and he knew that we were going to have to adapt very quickly, both corporately as Open Door Church and as churches around the world, and around the UK, and also individually. They call it pivoting. I don't know if you've heard of this phrase, but now or the change that you make because of the coronavirus crisis is called pivoting. I said to Gavin the other day, I've pivoted so much in the last four months, I think my spine has shattered. You know, we have to pivot. There's a new normal, different ways of doing things. And the problem is we can hang on to the past without recognising the opportunities that God is giving us in the future. And God has given us some wonderful opportunities. We've had to rethink how we've done church in 2020, very much holding on to our family value. We will always do things as one church and make sure that we all can be corporate together. That's very important to us. But we need to start to rethink how we do church in terms of uh, our, our owning of our theology of what church is, but also the prophetic words over us, being a field hospital, being very local. We're Open Door Church, Sunbury. How can we reach this particular uh, area and towns around? How can, what distinctiveness do we have? So we need to have a rethink. We need to not hold on to the past in terms of how... In verse 6, those disciples still holding on to what they thought the Messiah was, still holding on to the land being so important, the nation state of Israel. They had to let go of that thinking. Let go, let go, because Jesus is doing a new thing. Well, Jesus now is doing a new thing, Open Door Church. He's doing a new thing in us corporately. But he's also doing a new thing for you individually. So think about, think about that. How has God changed things for you? How has God changed things? He's doing a new thing. How, how uh, he is going to lead you into new opportunities. Right now, you have a unique opportunity as a Christian to reach out to and get to know people that maybe you've never spent time with so much before. I think the one thing about coronavirus crisis has been that it's broken down some of the walls of our English Englishman's home is his castle. I don't speak to my neighbour because of NHS clapping and the fact that you want to say stay safe to someone because you're not seeing so many people at work. Those of us that work, uh, uh, you're, you're not seeing so many people at church. You're not seeing your friends because you're maybe isolating. You're in your home. You're not having that social aspect so that when you do have uh, people are, are far more open to speak to you. Hey, this is a wonderful opportunity. You're, you're more likely to see family or to do family Zooms. I've heard a lot of families are having family Zooms together or maybe they're, they're gathering together as families. This is a wonderful opportunity. Today, pray. Lord, I know one of these opportunities are coming up. I'm going to see my neighbour or I know I'm going to uh, see a friend or maybe you're at work and you're in a bubble with a, a limited amount of people. Maybe God's given you an opportunity to speak about the faith that you have, the hope that you have in that more uh, condensed group of relationships that you have. It's also a time for us both as a church and as individuals. We can give real practical care to those that are in need, uh, whether that's shopping or getting uh, uh, prescriptions or having a uh, care for the elderly person in your street or, your, or the member of your family, or uh, a friend that you know, someone who's suffering with mental health issues, you know, that are suffering during this period, or those that are sick and need lifts or whatever. This is a time that has broken down some of the barriers of what it is in our English culture. And we've got an opportunity to show the love of Jesus in a, such a new way. And if we're hanging on to the past, this is how church is. 
these are the relationships that we'll have. I don't want any more relationships than those ones. Then we've missed the opportunity that God has given us to get to know the neighbor next door. 73% of all British people don't know their next door neighbor's names. Are you one of them? If so, get to know your next door neighbor's names and find out questions about them. Who knows? Care for people. It's also an opportunity to take time with him. This is a new thing. It's a new season. We don't know how long this will last. This may be over soon. It, it might not be over for a while. I don't know. Uh, what I do know is that I don't know a lot about what will happen in the future because already there are so many changes that we've had to do because things came to us that were a surprise. But they weren't a surprise to God. And he's given us opportunities. And so let's let go of our own way of doing things and risk some new relationships risk some new ways of helping people and also take time to hear from God and be with God in a time where maybe life is slower if it is slower because for some it is and for some it isn't and this isn't in any way a leveling experience it seems whatever situation we're in God has given you new opportunities to really go for it for him to really get to know him and to let go of some of the stuff that was in the past to be able to embrace all that God has given you to do, all opportunities that God is going to give you for the future. So let's trust him now, Open Door Church, and also listen to the Holy Spirit. And when he gives you opportunity to speak out, to give testimony, to pray, to care, to intervene in the name of Jesus and for uh, a person's good and a person's meeting with God. So let's do that. I just want to pray. Father God, thank you for Open Door Church. Thank you, Lord, that you're with us through uh, this whole uh, time, these whole weeks and months uh, that we've been through. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, that uh, Lord, we know that you're a God that walks with us and that nothing takes you by surprise, but that also you're always doing a new thing. Lord, this isn't just that it doesn't take you by surprise. You plan. You plan these things. You plan this moment. Lord, you understand this was going to happen and you've already planned uh, works of service uh, that we uh, had Galatians uh, to Ephesians 2 verse 10 that we uh, should should walk into so Lord we want to walk into those Lord God right now we want to walk into the good works you've pre-planned for us to do during this period of time Lord give us faith for that Lord help us to trust you Jesus Holy Spirit fill us with your presence and power that we might be an anointed people that change this world change this local community for Jesus Christ we pray this in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah amen 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 amen